Hello, this is Billy Kaur from the Carolina Circle Mile Wiki. Today is Saturday, May the 9th of 2015, and what you're looking at is um, a computer that was given to me by a co-worker, I guess, maybe a month ago or so, yeah, roughly a month ago, but who cares, really? <laughs> it, it, it's in my possession, that's all that matters. <laughs> this is a... 1994 era Toshiba satellite, and the model number escapes me right now. Let me flip it over because I can't open it with one. It's a Toshiba T1910CS. A um, this is typically what people would would have been using circa 1994 for a laptop computer. Now, not. Many consumers had laptops at the time. It was most this was mostly a business oriented um, kind of deal because well in 1994 not many people really had a computer to begin with. I know we didn't. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is a really really cool little piece of history. We'll take a quick little um, tour of it. We got power jack. I do have the cord with it power button what that is um oh that's the battery release battery I don't believe holds a charge floppy disk drive which um, I will discuss in further detail um, momentar momentarily and the news is not good actually we got the little trackball mouse more on that in a little bit because that is really 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 cool um, I've never noticed this before on here. I just pulled this flap down. Can this be opened? Okay. Looks like some kind of like placeholder for like a mouse and keyboard connection, which doesn't appear here. Okay. <laughs> and you get um some PC card slots. Have anything to test with it. And on the back, we get um, VGA out. And if you pull this little um, flap down, you get parallel and serial ports. I thought there was something else here. And you can even pull, pull this over to cover the VGA port. Still learning this thing. <laughs> and you get a Kensington lock slot there. And we're back on this side here. And um, no, this does not have any built-in um, audio except for the PC speaker. So, um, let's uh, open it up. This is, this is something that takes two hands. And here we are. Here it is in all its glory. Get a really nice um, tactile keyboard. I really like the feel of it. You get a um, a color passive matrix display. I believe the um, processor in it is a Intel 486 running at 33 megahertz. I assume it's an SX. And it's an Energy Star compliant. Isn't that wonderful? And there must have been a sticker there at one time. And you get little LEDs for power, caps lock, whatever overlay is. I don't know what that is. Num lock. Um, disk access lights for hard drive and floppy drive. A battery light and a, and a DC in light. Now, um... I guess there's nothing else to do except plug it on in and fire it up. If I can find the where it plugs in that. Oh yeah, here we go. Just showing it to you a while ago. Okay, we got the DC in light up now. And let's make some magic happen.
Uh, bad sea moss, but the machine's 21 years old. That's to be expected. Oh, okay, we're in the BIOS. I don't know if I've ever seen the BIOS in here before. Oh, wow, wow, the hard drive is only 200 megabytes. <laughs> uh, PC MCI APC card slot. No password. Power up mode. Processing speed high. Okay, how do I go to the next screen? Um, there might not even be another screen. Uh, so I don't see anything in here to set the time and date. And we'll just leave it as is. Just doing a memory test. It's got roughly 4 megs of memory. Booting into MS-DOS, as you can see, computer boots up like a champ. This is the original Toshiba install, by the way, from 1994. Custom Toshiba startup logo for Windows 3.11. Again, there's no sound on here except for the PC speaker. All right, now the the cool part about this machine, the mouse. This was a um, common um, feature on Toshiba laptops in the 1994 era. Basically, it's a trackball. You just move the little ball here, and it moves the little cursor around. And on the bottom here is the right click. And at the top, you really can't see it, is the uh, left click. I'm not sure what this is. This must be some kind of like center click button. Anyway, um, let me just demonstrate it. We'll... It's a, it's a really cool um, little uh, mouse to play with. Like I said, you can just go to accessories here, double click, and there you go. And we'll open up Paintbrush. Not very good to do on a mouse like that, but you, you get what I you get the picture. Not sure what that max time thing is. And let's see what day it thinks it is. Okay, it believes it's January first, nineteen ninety. So by that logic, I'm only one month old. How I'm able to make a video with a modern day camcorder from 20 some years in the future, um, we may never know. So, yeah, um, everything is up and running on here. Like I said, this is the original um, Toshiba install from 21 years ago. Apparently, whoever owned it originally had a one of those Canon bubble jet printers from back in the day. Those were pretty interesting little machines. I remember um, when I first got my Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme back in 2005. It came with some kind of Canon printer. I don't remember if it was a bubble jet. It probably was, but I think I wound up throwing it away because I never had a use for it. That's what these Toshiba utilities are. Make master disk creator that would be great, except for one problem, which I will um, get into in a little bit. Hmm, T nineteen ten demo. I wonder what this is. Never seen this before. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Satellite notebook computer four eighty six. Today's highly competitive business world requires the latest in technology to stay ahead of the game. <laughs> this is so cheesy but cool. Dax is smart. He knows that his business depends on equipment that is re reliable and rugged, yet affordable. He also knows that the Toshiba Satellite Series meets all of his requirements. Meanwhile, Zero settles for the other brand. 
no com the no com LX. Those those things were piles of crap. Even while on the road, the satellite's fast 486 processor allows DAX to perform just as efficiently as back of the office. Look at that face. <gasps> It's creeping me out. And how does that ponytail stay up like that? Oh, I see he's in space. The Toshiba Satellite's Max Time Power Management features auto resume, CPU sleep mode, hard disk auto off, display auto off, selectable speeds, means no time is lost, and DAX catches up on the workload. The only thing that Zero is able to catch up on is some Z's. Thanks to its oversized PCMCIA slot, DAX will be able to expand his system with a multitude of new add-on products like a... We'll never know. But without Toshiba's state-of-the-art PCMCIA, Zero's expansion options will be limited to say the least. <laughs> oh, this is so silly. Toshiba's unique ballpoint with quick port allows easy attachment of a pointing device with no cumbersome cables combined with... Without ballpoint with quick support, Zero has a difficult time using his warehouse management software. Apparently, when you don't have a mouse, you, it causes glue to go all over the place. With the satellite's superior monochrome or dual-scan dynamic STN color displays, DAX's designs are bright and crisp. Since Zero's screen isn't very clear, he resorts to traditional procedures riddled with traditional problems. Boy, that guy's life really stinks. <laughs> With a selection of PCMCIA hard disk products, I remember those, DAX can easily expand his storage options. This goes way too fast. Zero quickly runs out of disk space and can't expand his system. Again, I'd hate to be him. <laughs> Intelligent business decisions like purchasing the Toshiba Satellite T1910 series make DAX a winner. Although a slow learner, Zero realizes his mistake and makes an intelligent choice for a prosperous future. So we do get a happy ending. Still a better love story than Twilight. I had to say that, I know. <laughs> hey, I'm pushing F1. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see what, what, what kind of um, specs we got in this. Uh, 33 megahertz SL enhanced i486 SS processor, 8 kilobytes of internal cache, large disk drive, see salesperson for details. Apparently this must have been a demo for um, in stores. Lord, um, uh, full travel 82 key keyboard. This came in two flavors, the monochrome or the color. This is the color version, obviously. Apparently this, this particular series never came with a um, active matrix display, but I have to say the um, passive matrix display on the screen is actually really not too bad at all. But of course you're not going to be doing any gaming on it much, so there's really no need for it. Uh, exceptionally long battery battery life, maybe 21 years ago when the battery still worked. <laughs> State of the art expansion, four megabytes memory standard, expandable to 20 megabytes. Oversized PCMCIA slot. I hate the an oversized PCMCIA slot. I believe you have to have um, some kind of permit for that in some states. Okay, we'll go to the next little screen. All the connections of a desktop computer. Serial parallel port, PS2 mouse port, PS2 keyboard port, which I don't see. I'm sure it's probably there somewhere under that flap we saw. I just gotta look for it harder. A quick port for the ballpoint pointing device. Now we know what this is called. It's called the ballpoint pointing device. Very cool, actually. Not very intuitive, especially nowadays, but I like it. Pause this if you want to read it. I guess that was it. How do you get out of this? Okay, I don't want to see that, this again. So I'll do an alt tab.
Okay, um... Okay, I'll be right back. Let me figure out how to get out of this. There we are. I had to close it through the task manager. Uh, that was interesting. Kind of weird, but interesting. Feel bad for that Zero guy, though. Too bad he had a happy ending. I mean, I mean, at least he had a happy ending. But now we should probably move on to the not-so-happy portion of this machine which is what's keeping me from doing a whole lot with it. You see, a very important component in this machine is non-functional. And that piece of equipment happens to be the floppy disk drive. Let me show you what happens when we put a floppy disk in here. Let's just go with this return of arcade disk. One thing, I don't think it should be making that that motoring, that motor noise. And if we try to read the disc, it tries to read the disc. However, as you'll see momentarily, it cannot read the disc. And this goes for any disc that I put in it. It just, as soon as I put it in it, it starts making that grinding noise and it won't read the disc. Which means I cannot reformat the hard drive and put my own personal installation on here with my own programs and everything. I can't transfer data between this and any other system. So, this computer is completely disconnected from the outside world just because this is a bad floppy drive. And I've looked on eBay trying to find replacement floppy drives, but they are just completely rare and impossible to find. And I've even tried cleaning the um, disk drive with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, but it didn't make any difference at all. So, um... This is where you guys come in. I really want to get this laptop going again and back to its former glory. If, if anyone has any ideas on how I can get this working again, and if I, or um, if you happen to have another laptop similar to this with a working floppy drive that I can um, part out from you, let me know. Um, just um, post in the comments and let me know because I really, really want to get this working. So, um, with that said, we really can't do much more with it now. <laughs> this is um, Billy Core signing off on May the 9th, 2015. Good night, everybody.